25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. When I lived in New York, Robin, when I worked actually in uh, close to the city, I would go to this place to have breakfast and I would literally sometimes have to step over people who were sleeping in the winter in because on the the back side of the diner I would go to was an, an enclosed area so it was warmer than the than the street side and so the homeless people would literally be sleeping there and I would l- be stepping over them it was it was a heartbreaking thing and I used to always say to myself first of all therefore there by, by the grace of God go I because that could easily have been me right but I always thought why don't they go to Florida you know, why don't they go? At least it'll be a little bit warmer. And then, of course, you have mornings like this morning, and you realize that there are people out there right here in Florida that are probably cold. And um, the first time I ever met Karen Hill, I realized that she was a lady who has a heart to help people. She was helping people at that time who didn't know how to read, learn how to read from the Literacy Council. And you all probably are familiar with the relationship that Robin and I have had with the Literacy Council over the years. Well, Karen has gone on to do something else amazing and kind of with the same heart, which is to help homeless people. Karen is in the studio for the first time in a long time. And i got to tell you this, Karen. I looked it up just so I would have the numbers. Your visit with us on August 30th, 2013. Wow. That's a long time ago. Has 34,265 views. Wow. Yeah. It is the number one most viewed video of any that we've ever done. Oh wow! So okay. just, just well, thanks everybody. Just see if you can <laughs> just see if you can top it with this one. There you go. Um, and you have brought a guest with you, Tom Thomas. Sounds like he is a uh, a, a kindred spirit when it comes to trying to help people out. He manages the homeless management information system for Marion County. So Karen and Tom, good morning to both of you. Good, good morning. morning and thank you. What what a job you chose you have both chosen to do. Can I, can I ask a personal and uh, and hopefully not insensitive question? Have either of you ever been homeless? Yes, I have. You have. Yes. Uh, have you? No, I've not. No, ha- and where? What? Did you live on the streets? Did you live in a car? What was your homelessness? Actually, I've done both. I was homeless in San Francisco, uh, a beautiful city, and I was also homeless on the Monterey Peninsula, where I lived in a car. How did you get wow. out of it? How did you become not homeless? It was my desire to to really make a change. And I wasn't homeless because of bad choices. I was homeless because I was a dreamer. And I was attending art school, and I had this great idea, and I used those funds to um, mm, promote that idea, and mm-hmm. I ended up on the street. Like a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, exactly. that seems to be what happens. Yeah, And exactly. San Francisco is probably one of the cities that attracts people like yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Huge amount of services available to residents that are on the street in San Francisco. Um, real quick story. I, I lived in Santa Monica for a while, and I worked on the beach, so I had to walk through the park at the top of the, the, the cliffs. I don't know if you're familiar with the area. It's, a, it's kind of a linear kind of a park, and there would always be guys in there who were homeless. Mm-hmm. And I worked at a pizza place. We were allowed to burn, wink, wink, two pizzas. The boss knew what we were doing. Okay. We were taking pizzas home, or or at least we were allowed to. But if two if two were missing from the inventory, she was fine. Any more than two, she'd have a problem with that. We would we would make two pizzas purposely f- for the uh, the homeless. Just bring them up right. there. I, I often wondered, are we doing more harm than good? I mean, obviously feeding people is a good thing, but are you supporting a decision? that they made and sometimes I thought that they were just not even able to decide they didn't seem to be meant like you're obviously a sharp man but sometimes I don't think they all are they've got mental issues right definitely not I was at um, the feeding Monday night on the square and um, my husband went with me you guys both know Chris and um, we when we were driving home that was the one thing that we were talking about was just how many people obviously needed some uh, mental health support that are on the streets so when we see a guy with a cardboard sign (laughs) we don't know anything about him that's right Uh, we ask ourselves is he trying to rip me off does he have a nice place he looks like he's healthy Uh, are we doing more harm than good or is it better to just say you know there's a job over at subway there's a you know what's what is the answer to that you know that's a, that's a difficult question. I I don't think that you're ever doing any harm by giving, but at the same time you do have those individuals that are basically con artists. Uh, they're basically collecting funds, and and they're not necessarily homeless, but the greater percentage of people really are in need of assistance. And when you talk about those that are 
disabled here in Marion County in some way, that represents about 18% or 128 people of those that we surveyed that really have mental conditions where they are not going to be able to care for themselves without the generosity or the benefit of human services programs. So what happened to their families, though? I mean, don't their families miss them? Don't they realize they're living out on the street? I, I, I think that the families probably have divorced themselves from quite a few of them. Um, especially those that have and continue to have drug use issues. Uh, yeah. uh, but those that are mentally um, challenged, it's very difficult for their families to deal with them when they're not on their medications. And obviously we don't want to be judgmental. We just want to help. Exactly. So, so Karen, you've been with the executive director of the Marion County Homeless Council now for how many years? Oh, for eight months. Eight months? Eight months. Wow. I just started, yeah. Wow, well, good for you. Yeah. Eight, that's not just starting eight months ago. That's well, you know what? With the homeless world, and you, you've you known me for a long time now, it's um, it's amazing how much there is to learn. And it's amazing how much daily life and every aspect of life is affected by homelessness. And all of us who are not homeless, how it really impacts us and our community and the dollars mm -hmm. that this country spends on well, you, homelessness. With, when you were with the Literacy Council, you showed us how the average person can help. Absolutely. Is there a, such an opportunity with the Homeless Council? Oh, there's multitudes of opportunities to help the homeless. Um, right now, we are preparing for our annual count. Um, most of the funding to support homelessness comes out of the government, out of HUD. And once a year, they say, we need to know how many people are unsheltered. So on January 21st, yes. which is a Thursday night, the Homeless Council and as many volunteers as we can train um, will be out on the streets. And we will be waiting till 9 o'clock at night when all the shelters are closed. We will be out interviewing the homeless and trying to find out as much about them as we can. So we definitely really? need volunteers to help us do that. And the point of that count, it's called, it's got a fancy name, a point in time count. But the whole point is how many people are really homeless? Um, how many people are veterans? How many people are chronically homeless? They've been on the streets for right, over right. a year. Or there's a definition for chronically homeless. So what does the government really need to give us? as a community to yeah, be really be yeah. able to support these families and move them forward. So they're families, they're, they're not just individuals, they're people that have children oh, out on the street? Oh, our streets. biggest need right now that we have noticed in our organization as the Homeless Council individually, the biggest population we have is single mothers with children. Four and five children living in a car with their moms. And there's no shelter in Marion County big enough to support a mother with four or five that children. That is too sad. Mm -hmm. We've got a polar vortex coming our way, I think, in a few days. So Correct. It's, gonna, it's cold now. It's going right. to be colder then. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can we do something for that? I mean, I know that's not the main reason you came today. Right. But, but well, I mean, everything is why we're here today. We really want to educate the community about homelessness. Uh -huh. And that's when I said eight months just sounds like, wow, I've been there a long time, but it's there again it's so encompassing yeah. that with where we are in the community with homelessness right. it's not that guy standing on the corner with that sign with the dirty clothes that's on. not the guy that's not who we serve hmm. most of those people are the people that want to be homeless or mm -hmm. can't be anything but homeless because they have a mental illness that will not allow them to go to a shelter wow or be with other people. You know, we can't put them in a dorm environment because their mental illness doesn't support that. Someone, I'll give you an example, PTSD. They can't go into a barracks-like atmosphere, a dorm-like atmosphere, because it freaks them out. They're not coming into a shelter. Right, right, right. So but the people that we're serving our families, our mothers, our single women, single men, men with children. Those are the people that are out there. So we want to educate Marion County that, yes, of course, the chronically homeless person with the sign is standing on the corner. Right, right. And we're going to do what we can to support those people, but that's not who we're focusing on. We're focusing on that person that maybe had a job, got sick. Right, right. You know, let's, how much of America lives paycheck to paycheck? Mm -hmm. Now you're sick, you've just missed two or three weeks of work, you can't pay your rent, that's who we want to help. 
Karen Hill and Tom Thomas are here. We're talking about the homeless right here in Marion County, and uh, we want to learn more. So we'll take a little break and come back and learn more after the break. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Variable cloudiness, sand, breezy on this Wednesday with some showers along the coast. The high 64 in the north to 72 in the south. It'll be mostly cloudy winds tonight with a couple of showers mainly near the coast, although 52 well inland, 59 at the beaches. For Thursday, clouds, some sun, and rather breezy with a shower in places, high 71 to 75. And Friday, times of clouds and sun with a chance of a shower, high 74 to 78. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall Screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound at DIY only $4.99. Plus DIY has the largest selection of mobile home parts and accessories anywhere. From carpet to doors, get the DIY supplies you need for less. The DIY Home Center Outlet. We are your building material closeout store. 2191 Northwest 10th Street, just two miles east of I-75. No doubt about it, Ocala, the cool winter season is the perfect time to plant a tree. And around here, when you think of trees, it has to be Bob Wines Camellia Garden, Southeast 38th Street, Ocala. Better yet, Bob's having a fabulous half-price sale on shade trees. Check out their already super low prices, then slash 50% off the price. Deals start with Bob's extra-large 6 to 8 footers as low as $49.99. And go all the way up to his super jumbo trees up to 14 feet, delivered, planted, and Guaranteed for as little as $399. What more? How about this? Quality container grown citrus trees, including orange, tangerine, lime, tangelo, and kumquat, all half price. Check out this week's ad for all the savings. They're all over the place at Bob Wines. Don't forget this year's best flower show, the Camellia Show Spectacular, going on right now. Bring the whole family. Bob Wines, Southeast 38th Street, daily till 4, Saturdays till 2. Homegrown, locally owned since 1952. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. What makes male shopaholics harder to spot is how they view shopping in general. Because where women tend to treat shopping as a chance to be social, guys often view shopping as a competition. The fastest way to lose weight is to avoid all meat and dairy products. Whether your partner shaved a few points off his golf score or she got a promotion at work, the way you react is even more important than how you react during a crisis. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, 12 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you have a home, you are blessed. And there but by the grace of God go I when you look at a homeless person. Karen Hill has been um, giving her heart to this community for as long as I've known her. And she's doing it now through the Marion County Homeless Council as the executive director and Tom Thomas is in the studio. He manages the Homeless Management Information System for Marion County. They're here to talk about the 2016 point-in-time survey count of the homeless in Marion County. That's going to be on the 21st? Correct. Is that right? So let's get that done real quickly. So do you, are you recruiting volunteers as a part of this interview appearance, uh, radio appearance? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we need volunteers uh, because um, because Marion County is one of the larger counties in the state. Um, some of the outlying areas are more difficult to count because they're the wooded areas and yeah, they're not right. safe. And so we need as many volunteers so that they can be paired up um, so that they can always be safe when they're entering encampments or when they're entering wooded areas. Will there be uh, undercover law enforcement officers uh, part of the pairings when you go out there just to make sure? <laughs> I don't think they'll be those. undercover. I mean, we're, we're working really hard to um, not only educate the community, but to educate our unsheltered residents, which yeah, I think yeah. is a much nicer term than our homeless people, <laughs> our unsheltered residents that we will be out and yeah. we will be interviewing. Um, I've been. I went to the feedings. I'm going to go to the feedings all month. We're setting. We're passing out flyers um, to those residents, and we want them to understand why we're out there. You know, a lot of the homeless are going to think that we're out there because the government wants to get them, 
because right, that's part of right. mental illness. Sure. And sure. so we want them to understand that the whole point is to help them. Because you know, the more we can identify, the more money we can bring. I, I don't know if he's still there, but the, I, I saw a guy in a tent. I, w- my dog is no longer here, so I don't take uh, my dog for a walk right. anymore. But I took my dog for a walk one time along r- r- the railroad tracks that I live near. Okay, yeah. And, and I was up on an embankment, and I looked down into the woods, and I saw a tent. Mm-hmm. And I could see that it was not just a tent. I mean, this guy had a whole It was his campsite. home. He had a whole campsite. He had a cooking thing. He had a, a wash line. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, this poor guy. I mean, I wonder if anybody even knows he's there. So I can tell you where it is. I don't well, know if anybody's ever walked in there and tried to talk to him or not. And I think that's part of the reason we're here, is not only are we looking for volunteers who are willing to go out there with us on the 21st and help us interview um, the homeless, but we also need people that did, did exactly what you just did. We need them to call us and let us know where are the encampments? Mm-hmm. Where okay, are s- some of these people living so that we can find them? Cause if so you take, hadn't, go take, ahead. take me through this. Okay, so let's say I say to you, Tom, you want to come with me? There's a guy living in a tent. Let's go speak to him, okay? So now you and I go, you, you know more about this, and I'm just showing you where he is, basically. Do we, I mean, obviously, we've got to get his trust first. We've got exactly. to let him know that we're not there to hurt him or arrest exactly. him or anything. But do we give him hope? Do we tell him we can get you out of this tent into a home? You know, there are those situations where you can impart some degree or element of hope. Um, by indicating that there are services available. But a lot of the services uh, are hinged on eligibility requirements. And so when you, when you talk about services that are available, and there, there are some, there are some other things and some components that the homeless really don't want to have to contend with. Um, and that's that population they distrust the government. They distrust agencies. Mm. They're they're distrustful, and so getting getting their trust is important. But I think what what really needs to happen is um, some somewhat of a comprehensive assessment so that we know exactly how to help right, that right. particular individual. And that's that's what we the yeah. homeless council is doing currently is working with partner agencies to create a coordinated service delivery system so that we can target that person, those families, and direct them to the most appropriate service or the most appropriate agency. And I'm guessing some of that service has to be food, right? I mean, you're bringing food to them too, right? Or we at least tell them where to get the food. Okay. Who's okay. feeding? Where okay. are they feeding? What days are they feeding? All right. All right. Well, you know, those well, kinds we, of things. 50% or more than 50% of the services provided in Marion County through service agencies offer food assistance. Oh, my. Now, when you now when, sense, yeah. when when you have uh, the volunteers go out and they uh, take the survey and fill out the papers, what happens if they find some minors out there without any adults and they're just there, whether they're runaways or or whatever they are? Do they call the law enforcement and then do they round up the minors to try to find their families? Do you know. I've been with the council eight years and I've never encountered a youth on the street. Oh. Um, we really? d- we do have a, a program here in Marion County. Arnett House mm-hmm. basically uh, takes in youth, and I think um, most youth probably rely on the generosity of their friends rather than to take to the streets. Um, there may be families with children where the children are left abandoned, but I don't think they're really young children that are left abandoned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we've not encountered that. That's not a that's not one of our big problems here in Marion County. And oh. the last thing that we would want to do is make someone who is out on the streets think that the first thing we're going to do is call the police. That's the mm-hmm. last thing we want to do. Or take their kids away. Or take, take their, their kids. kids away. And I have to tell you that from what I understand, and I am not DCF or the law, but if you are a single parent and you are living in a car with your children, they are not taking your children away from you anymore. Uh, you are at least keeping well, them together. What if somebody together. did call the police? The police, I mean, the police don't arrest people for being homeless? No, only if they're breaking the law. Okay. And so if they're 
loit perhaps loitering and okay. they won't move along right. those kind of things but even that um the mayor and chief graham are working very hard to not arrest yeah they yeah, really yeah. don't want to arrest if they don't have to you know we go to as many of those meetings together as we can and it doesn't do anybody any good the community or the homeless person to arrest them the, the one thing about and rob and i have been familiar with our net house for a long time mm -hmm. and, it, and years ago karen i worked for the uh, juvenile detention center and I remember uh, a, a kid being brought in who would be so much better at the detention center because it was shelter, it was exactly. food, it was warmth, but you couldn't put him in there because he didn't break any laws. Right. And thank goodness for the Arnett House because they were able to uh, fill in that gap. Uh, if you can hear me talking in your headset, you'll be able to hear the caller. So let's take the call. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for calling. Hey, hey this is Gary. I got a question to ask. Um... It'll be two years this June. Uh, my wife and I, we took in a young man. Uh, he was one of our kids' friends, and he was 17 at the time. He's now 19. We still got him in school. We're trying to get him graduated this year. And according to the school system paperwork, he's homeless. His mother is a drug addict on the streets of Ocala, and his father just got out of prison and uh, like a week or two weeks before uh, Thanksgiving. Of, of last this past year but what my question is is somebody in his family's been collecting benefits we we're, we're not social service people we don't i don't even know how to deal with it. he's supposed to be getting some kind of benefit and uh i don't even know i don't have the slightest idea where to start with that and also um when his dad was in prison, his dad, I think, is 62 or 64 years old, but he, he was, somebody in his family was getting Social Security benefits for him. We want to just get all that stopped if somebody's been getting money fraudulently. And uh, as far as, like, uh, food stamps and stuff, we're not worried about any of that, but uh, if he's supposed to have any other benefits until he graduates high school, uh, do you have any phone numbers of which what direction that I could turn, and I'll and I'll hang up and listen to you. Absolutely. Thank you. First of all, there's two things that you need to know. The whole community needs to know. There are two definitions of homelessness by the government. There's the definition of homelessness for children in school. And that is if you are not living in your own home, if you're living on your grandparents' couch or you're sleeping with your aunts, cousins, cousins, sisters, brothers, backyard, or wherever you are, you are not homeless. Excuse me, you are homeless. Oh, you, are as homeless. you are homeless as far as the school system is concerned. Okay. You are not homeless as far as HUD is concerned. Ah, okay. You are only homeless as an adult if you're actually out on the streets according to HUD. Okay. So there's two okay. defi def different definitions. For this gentleman that's calling, you need to call Suzanne McGuire with the school system. She is the homeless advocate with the Marion County School System. If you call the Marion County School Board and just tell them you need the phone number for Suzanne McGuire, I'm sure Suzanne would be more than happy to help you because that's her position with the school system. Okay, good information. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we've got a minute and a half left, so we won't be able to do every answer, but the, your phone number is probably really important. Let me squeeze in one last phone call. Okay. Good morning, thank you for calling. Yeah, Larry, it's me, Tom. Real quick, if he has been eligible for Social Security um, death benefits from a relative or something, he can contact the local Social Security office and give them his Social Security number and the name and Social Security number, if he knows it, of the person that's died and see who the representative des designated representative is for the Social Security he was supposed to get. Okay. They right. will have that information. I don't know about any of the other stuff. I, I, I'm just not up on tune for that, but I do know that it was a um, you know designated representative. Okay. That's why Beth and I had to adopt Stephanie's girls. All right, so we got, they we, could get thank you, Tom. We got we got Okay. Yeah, we got 30 seconds. I didn't mean to cut you off. Real quickly, give a phone number, if you would. 732-1369.
I think there's a lot we didn't cover. There is a lot we didn't even <sighs> there's touch. There's a lot we didn't touch. And if anybody wants to be a part of the uh, 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 count, you've got a training meeting. We do have a meeting on January 12th at the Early Learning Coalition. And again, you could call us at 732-1369. Leave us a message. One of us will definitely get back to you. Karen Hill, Tom Thomas, thank you both for what you're doing. Certainly. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Stocks under pressure on Wall Street as North Korea claims to have successfully carried out a hydrogen bomb test. This is a lot of cause for concern. They-